Today I will be reading The Stolen Party by Liliana Hecker, written in 1982. Before I start, I just want to point out that I have gone down through this document, and for each word that is listed in the footnotes at the bottom here, um, which are which is a list of words and phrases with their definitions, I have already inserted those definitions into the story in these comments on the right side. So as we're reading, you can look at those comments to see the definitions of those words and phrases. The Stolen Party by Liliana Hecker. As soon as she arrived, she went straight to the kitchen to see if the monkey was there. It was. What a relief. She wouldn't have liked to admit that her mother had been right. Monkeys at a birthday? Her mother had sneered. Get away with you, believing any nonsense you're told. She was cross, but not because of the monkey, the girl thought. It's just because of the party. I don't like you going, she told her. It's a rich people's party. Rich people go to heaven too, said the girl, who studied religion in school. Get away with heaven, said the mother. The problem with you, young lady, is that you like to fart higher than your... And we can see over here that her mother used an expression that includes a curse word. The girl didn't approve of the way her mother spoke. She was barely nine and one of the best in her class. I'm going because I've been invited, she said, and I've been invited because Luciana is my friend, so there. Ah, yes, your friend, her mother grumbled. She paused. Listen, Rosara, she said at last. That one's not your friend. You know what you are to them? The maid's daughter, that's what. Rosario blinked hard. She wasn't going to cry. Then she yelled, Shut up! You know nothing about being friends! Every afternoon, she used to go to Luciana's house, and they would both finish their homework while Rosara's mother did the cleaning. They had their tea in the kitchen, and they told each other secrets. Rosara loved everything in the big house, and she also loved the people who lived there. I'm going because it will be the most lovely party in the whole world. Luciana told me it would. There will be a magician, and he will bring a monkey and everything. The mother swung around to take a good look at her child and pompously put her hands on her hips. Monkeys at a birthday, she said. Get away with you, believing any nonsense you're told. Rosara was deeply offended. She thought it unfair of her mother to accuse other people of being liars simply because they were rich. Rosara, too, wanted to be rich, of course. If one day she managed to live in a beautiful place, would her mother stop loving her? She felt very sad. She wanted to go to that birthday party more than anything else in the world. I'll die if I don't go, she whispered, almost without moving her lips. She wasn't sure whether she'd been heard, but on the morning of her party, she discovered that her mother had starched her Christmas dress, and in the afternoon, after washing her hair, her mother rinsed it in apple vinegar so that it would be all nice and shiny. Before going out, Rosara admired herself in the mirror with her white dress and glossy hair and thought she looked terribly pretty. Signora Enos also seemed to notice. As soon as she saw her, she said, How lovely you look today, Rosara. Rosara gave her starched skirt a slight toss with her hands and walked into the party with a firm step. She said hello to Luciana and asked about the monkey. Luciana put a secretive look, put on a secretive look and whispered into Rosara's ear, He's in the kitchen, but don't tell anyone, tell anyone because it's a surprise. Rosara wanted to make sure. Carefully, she entered the kitchen, and there she saw it, deep in thought inside its cage. It looked so funny that the girl stood there for a while watching it, and later, every so often, she would slip out of, her, out of the party unseen and go and admire it. Rosara was the only one allowed into the kitchen. Signora Enos had said, You, yes, but not the others. They're much too boisterous. They might break something. Rosara had never broken anything. She even managed the jug of orange juice, carrying it from the kitchen into the dining room. She held it carefully and didn't spill a single drop. 
and Signora Enos had said, Are you sure you can manage a jug as big as that? Of course she could manage. She wasn't a Butterfingers like the others, like that blonde girl with the bow in her hair. As soon as she saw Rosara, the girl with the bow had said, And you? Who are you? I'm a friend of Luciana, said Rosara. No, said the girl with the bow. You are not a friend of Luciana, because I am her cousin, and I know all her friends, and I don't know you. So what, said Rosara. I come here every afternoon with my mother, and we do our homework together. You and your mother do your homework together, asked the girl, laughing. I and Luciana do our homework together, said Rosara, very seriously. The girl with the bow shrugged her shoulders. That's not being friends, she said. Do you go to school together? No. So where do you know her from, said the girl, getting impatient. Rosara remembered her mother's words perfectly. She took a deep breath. I'm the daughter of the employee, she said. Her mother had said very clearly, if someone asks, you say you're the daughter of the employee. That's all. She also told her to add, and proud of it. But Rosara thought that never in her life would she dare say something of the sort. What employee, said the girl with the bow, employee in a shop? No, said Rosara angrily. My mother doesn't sell anything in any shop, so there. So how come she's an employee, said the girl with the bow. Just, the, just then, Signora Enos arrived saying, shh, shh, and asked Rosara if she wouldn't mind helping serve out the hot dogs, as she knew the house so much better than the others. See, Rosara said to the girl with the bow, and when no one was looking, she kicked her in the shin. Apart from the girl with the bow, all the others were delightful. The one she liked best was Luciana, with her golden birthday crown, and then the boys. Rosara won the sack race, and nobody managed to catch her when they played tag. When they split into two teams to play charades, all the boys wanted her for their side. Rosara felt she had never been so happy in all her life. But the best was still to come. The best came after Luciana blew out the candles. First, the cake. Signora Enos had asked her to help pass the, cake, pass the cake around, and Rosara had enjoyed the task immensely, because everyone called out to her, shouting, Me, me! Rosara remembered a story in which there was a queen who had the power of life or death over her subjects. She had always loved that, having the power of life or death. To Luciana and the boy, she gave the largest pieces, and to the girl with the bow, she gave a slice so thin she could see through it. After the cake came the magician, tall and bony with a fine red cape. A true, magi a true magician, he could untie handkerchiefs by blowing on them and make a chain with links that had no openings. He could guess what cards were pulled out of a pack, and the monkey was his assistant. He called the monkey partner. Let's see here, partner, he would say. Turn over a card and don't run away, partner. Time to work is now. The final trick was wonderful. One of the other children had to hold the monkey in his arms and the magician said he would make him disappear. What, the boy, they all shouted. No, the monkey, shouted back the magician. Rosara thought that this was truly the most amusing party in the whole world. The magician asked a small fat boy to come and help, but the small fat boy got frightened almost at once and dropped the monkey on the floor. The magician picked him up carefully, whispered something in his ear, and the monkey nodded almost as if he understood. You mustn't be so unmanly, my friend, the magician said to the fat boy. The magician turned around as if to look for spies. A sissy, said the magician, go sit down. Then he stared at all the faces one by one. Rosara felt her heart tremble. You with the Spanish eyes, said the magician, and everyone saw that he was pointing at her. She wasn't afraid, either holding the monkey nor when the magician made him vanish. 
not even when at the end the magician flung his red cape over over Rosaro's head and uttered a few magic words and the monkey reappeared chattering happily in her arms the children clapped furiously and before Rosara turned to her seat the magician said thank you very much my little countess she was so pleased with the compliment that a while later when her mother came to fetch her that was the first thing she told her i helped the magician and he said to me thank you very much my little countess it was strange because up to then rosara had thought that she was angry with her mother all along rosara had imagined that she would say to her see that monkey see that the monkey wasn't a lie but instead she was so thrilled that she told her mother all about the wonderful magician her mother tapped her on the head and said so now you're a, now we're a countess but one could see that she was beaming. And now they both stood in the entrance because a moment ago, Senior, Senora Enos, smiling, had said, please wait here a second. Her mother suddenly seemed worried. What is it? She asked Rosara. What is it? Said Rosara. It's nothing. She just wants to get the presents for those who are leaving. See? She pointed at the fat boy and at the girl with pigtails who were also waiting there next to their mothers, and she explained about the presents. She knew because she had been watching those who left before her. When one of the girls was about to leave, Signora Enos would give her a bracelet. When a boy left, Signora Enos gave him a yo-yo. Rosara preferred the yo-yo because it sparkled, but she didn't mention that to her mother. Her mother might have said, so why don't you ask for one you blockhead that's what her mother was like rosara didn't feel like explaining that she'd be horribly ashamed to be the odd one out instead she said i was the best behaved at the party and she said no more because signora enos came out into the hall with two bags one pink and one blue first she went up to the fat boy gave him a yo-yo out of the blue bag and the fat, fat boy left with his mother then she went to the girl and gave her a bracelet out of the pink bag, and the girl with the pigtails left as well. Finally, she came to Rosara and her mother. She had a big smile on her face, and Rosara liked that. Signora Enos looked down at her, then looked up at her mother, and then said something that made Rosara proud. What a marvelous daughter you have, Kirmina. For an instant, Rosara thought that she'd give her two presents, the bracelet and the yo-yo. Signora Enos bent down as if about to look for something. Rosara also leaned forward, stretching out her arm, but she never completed the movement. Signora Enos didn't look in the pink bag, nor did she look in the blue bag. Instead, she rummaged in her purse. In her hand appeared two bills. You really and truly earned this, she said, handing them over. Thank you for all your help, my pet. Rosara felt her arms stiffen, stick close to her body, and then she noticed her mother's hand on her shoulder. Instinctively, she pressed herself against her mother's body. That was all, except her eyes. Rosara's eyes had a cold, clear look that fixed itself on Signora Enos's face. Signora Enos, motionless, stood there with her hand outstretched, as if she didn't dare draw it back, as if the slightest change might shatter an infinitely delicate balance.